The whare Māori is the only carved house in the marae. Ratana had it built as a museum to house the objects of the exorcised atua or spirits. Ornaments, crutches, spectacles and weapons were kept here, safe and harmless under Ratana's mana. By 1919, news of Ratana's faith healing had spread far and wide, even overseas. Many people moved their homes to be with the Māngai. Many more who couldn't travel wrote to Ratana, and some claim to have been actually healed by post. The Ratana concert party proved invaluable at home and later abroad. This versatile group laid the foundations for his widespread appeal throughout the country. In 1921, the Māngai took his message to the people, north, south, east and west, every town he could get to and still the people came. What was a homestead became a fledgling town, and the logistics of housing and transporting the multitudes challenged even the government. A station was built, buildings sprang up like mushrooms. Occasionally, Rathana found time to take a much needed break from the Morihu. In appreciation, the children composed this song for the manga. In 1925, the Ratana church was registered and Ratana climbed down from his first vehicle and began the groundwork for the second, the political. Arepa, Omeka, Piriwiri Tua and Hamuera symbolise the four corners of New Zealand. The meeting house itself is divided territorially, not tribally, following the same lines as the four Māori seats established much earlier in the 1860s. It was Ratana's ambition to win those seats with the four quarters. The Treaty of Waitangi and the need to have it ratified had been a sticking point with the Waikato tribes and King Rata for a long time. Ratana joined them, and a four-year crusade to take a covenant to King George V gathered 40,000 signatures. Ratana and a party of 40 duly went to England, but were refused an audience with the King and the Prime Minister. You'd think the New Zealand High Commission would have helped us. The orders have come from New Zealand. The government does not want it known here what's happened to us in our land. What else can we do? Nothing. We can do no more here in London. This city will face its own judgment one day for the way it's treated our people. Out of this, Ratana prophesied the Second World War and he would become the government. Ratana went to Geneva, the headquarters of the League of Nations. Although the League wasn't in session, Ratana was received by international delegates as he tried to gain world recognition of Māori rights. 
They traveled also to Japan and were greeted by Bishop Nakara of the Methodist Church. An exchange of gifts on their departure sealed a friendship which exists even today. But Ratana was wrongly accused of making a deal with the Japanese to invade New Zealand, and the New Zealand government even asked the British to make inquiries. On January 1928, the temple was opened on the prophet's birthday, and Ratana stood between the two bell towers and announced his spiritual works were completed. A year later, Tiaki Omana, Hami Tokoru, Ratana's son, Paraire Paikea, and Eruira Tirikatane stood unsuccessfully as Ratana candidates in the four Māori seats. But in 1932, Eruira Tirikatane became the first independent Ratana member of parliament for Southern Māori, with a policy based on the Treaty of Waitangi. With the depression racking the country in the 30s, Labour under Michael Joseph Savage became the government in 1935 and Ratana gained two of the four Māori seats. Then Ratana visited the new Prime Minister. Greetings, Mr Ratana. How do you do, Prime Minister? It's a great pleasure to see you again. Thank you, Mr Savage, for giving your time for this meeting. I welcome you to my Marae. Please. Kai Prime Minister, I have gifts which I would like to give to you as a memento of our meeting today and as a symbol of our unity. May I? The first of my gifts are these three hui of feathers and their waka, the potato. The hui of feathers represents the heritage of the Māori of this land. The waka of the feathers is a potato. As it happens, we have no land left in which to grow our food. This represents the power and authority of the Māori people today, which I now place in your hands. This watch belonged to my ancestor, Te Rātana Ngāhina, who was loyal to the government of his time. I give this also into your hands. This badge represents the Ratana people who number over 40,000. Today, I commend them to your care. Therefore, Mr. Premier, may God bless you and your government so that you will always be mindful of your Maori people. Mr. Ratna, I am overwhelmed by the great significance of the gifts you have presented to me, which I accept with pleasure and for which I thank you a thousand times. I am aware how precious you find the treaty, and I take it upon myself to undo the wrongs and injustices that your people have suffered. Greetings to you, Ratna, and to the people of the land. Then I'm with the premium. Sure. The alliance was sealed. In 1946, the four quarters held the balance of power for the Labour government. Today, the four quarters still exist, although only two of the Māori MPs are Ratana. The things that uh, the late Michael Joseph Savage talked about actually came to pass uh, by way of legislation and towards self-determination and all of those sorts of things. I mean, the Board of Māori Affairs or the Māori Land Board was set up way back in those years, but it was then started to, to be dismantled by the, the previous administration. Uh, or should I say the National Party. It's probably fair to say that 99%, if not 100% of Ratana still follow the Labour Party. But basically, even those people, even those people, I'm bound to say, uh, support the uh, policies uh, in which we, as a party, are pursuing. There's very few Māoris, in fact, in this country that disagree with that. Because, you see, in the end, all of those policies aim towards self-determination. Ratna has been a movement more than a simple religion. It has brought people together across tribal boundaries. They are basically simple and, and relatively poor people, but they've managed to maintain an ability to stand on their own feet and to stick by their ideals 
and that has given them a strength and I think a growing strength. Ratanapar was registered as a township in 1954. Today it is a thriving self-contained community 12 kilometers east of Wanganui. Some say Ratana's work has finished, that the Alpha and the Omega is complete. But for his daughter and present leader of the Ratana Church, there is the faith, the land, and issues of the future. She is very humble. She was one of those that witnessed when her father was put through the trials by the Holy Spirit. And she saw everything. What else can I doubt? She's very old now. And I thank God for giving her that strength to carry out the cloak which is on her shoulders. Hurry up.